welcome back to a new video on the 2001 Honda 400EX. As you guys know, last video, a subscriber dropped this thing off and uh, he just picked it up. I think he got it for a pretty good price, but it would not run and it had a really bad ticking sound. So we tore it down and found out that the cam chain was super loose, the valves were bent, it was not good. So we found the culprit, which was the timing chain tensioner right here. So this thing, the spring or coil that winds it up, it broke off. So there's supposed to be another end like that right here that grabs in here. Right to there. Then the other end goes in there and grabs around there. You can see it's broken off right there. Let me try to fish that out of there for you guys. Of the uh, spring there. You can see it just snapped right in half. And that goes right into that groove right there on this thing. So that's why it didn't have any tension on it. That failed and uh, the timing became off, which in turn bent the valves. So every single valve was bent except for this one. The exhaust valve on the left. So both intake were bent, one exhaust valve was bent slightly. Then this one, I didn't really know if it was bent or not. It looked good in the drill, but we went ahead and ordered all new valves. We went with the Kibble White valves. Um, they're, they're pretty good valves. And then we went with a Weissco timing chain. You can see right there. And then what else did we get for this one? A manual chain tensioner. That should work pretty well that and then a new oil filter because we have to do the oil change and then uh, we got to hone out the cylinder as well even though the cylinder looks perfect just have to get that uh, surface off of there and then we got new piston rings so the rings I think are right in here because the piston looked good so we're just gonna throw new rings on it but yeah so we're gonna attempt to get all that done today we have to take off the side cover right here to get to the timing chain uh, to replace that. I'm guessing this one's really stretched. So we are going to get the cover off first, get that out, and then assemble this thing and do the first start and first test drive on it. So that's the plan for today. Hopefully it all goes smoothly and we get this thing done. All right, we're at the right hand side of the quad here. A couple things we gotta take off before taking off the cover. The clutch is still connected and take off these two bolts and take off the clutch cable. The oil lines are connected down here. Just two uh, eight millimeter bolts holding these two lines on. When you take these off, be careful. There's a O-ring gasket on each of these. Don't lose those. And then we've got to take off the brake pedal for the back, for the rear. Um, and that comes off hopefully pretty easily. Yeah, it's just a cotton pin in there. So let's get working on that. These have just come off. A little easier to do it that way instead of taking the whole clutch thing off. It saves a little time. See, the whole thing came off. So that's done. Get this clutch out of the way here. Work on these oil lines down here. Oil is probably going to pour out. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. See the little O-ring? In there. Don't lose these. They're kind of a weird size. actually put this double pin back in so oil lines are off that's good to go one more thing to do is get the brake pedal off we might be able to get away without taking the brake pedal off I just took I just took the spring off right here we'll see if that's enough let's get these bolts out all the way through. Let's 
see. One hidden underneath there. Any more? There's one right there I want to get. There we go. Alright, I think that's all of them. Might have to, uh, problems with the rubber mat. Oh yeah, she's on there. Might have to hit right here with the screwdriver. Pretty good. Finally popped off. Let that oil drain. All right, let's see what we got going on. Looks like a spring came loose. It's pretty good inside the cover. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, that clutch looks amazing. Look at that basket, it's like perfect. Jeez, looks brand new. Wow, is that clean in there? Looks really nice. Really nice bottom end so far here. Okay, so the timing chain's behind here. Looks like we have to take everything off to get to it, which kind of sucks. This timing chain's kind of a pain to change out compared to other quads. Let's see if I can bend this up. All right, let's get the clutch off of here. These are just 10 millimeter bolts here. It's a little stuck. All right, if we can get that nut off of there, the whole thing can just come right out. So these nuts have like a little divot right here that's crunched over on it. So in order to get it off, you have to hit that the hammer the opposite way so that it isn't pinched on there. Let's see if we can get her. This one is really on there. We did a good job pinching this one. <laughs> Almost too good of a job. Alright, I couldn't get that divot out, so I just zipped it right off and it came off, so. Yeah. And there's a washer in there. It says out on it. I think there's another washer in there too. Yeah, another one. That one's tough to get out. There we go. Just taking the whole clutch off. Alright. Got the clutch off. Now we just have to get this off. So let's see what kind of socket is that. Off like that. Washer behind there. And this thing should pull right out. There's a small gear in there. Comes off first. Take off that. Come off. Not 
we can get the cam chain out. We'll go compare and see if this one's stretched compared to the new one. All right, so here's the old one. Right here. Let's see what the new one looks like. Weisco cam chain. Let's see if this one was stretched at all. Even if it wasn't, it was probably worn out. Yeah, I would say that stretched a little bit. Old one, new one. Look how much that one stretched. Probably a couple millimeters at least. All right, just drop her through. Pretty easy. Line her up. Slide that back into place. And then we're just gonna put everything back how we had it. You can see on this gear there's like a flat part right there. There's one of these teeth that are like ground down on it. That's flat. It only fits on one way. There you go, right there. It goes on like that. And then same with this one. You can see it says out on this one right here. And the guy marked it with a white part. And then that's the flat side right there. That goes in the same spot. See, I'll try to put it on in a different area and it doesn't go on, see that? It can only go on one way. There we go. Just like that. And our oil pump gear. That goes on. And then they're not. And we'll torque that down. All right, we got everything back on. I just want to quick take out this oil screen right here. There is a bolt right there. I took it out. I can just pull this screen out of here and just check it. What that looks like. And good thing we are because there's a couple chunks in there. Look at that. What is that stuff? Looks like just debris from something. But it's always good to clean this out. We'll spray that out with some brake cleaner. Really clean that up. But you can see that's kind of where things get caught. Another thing to check for while we're in here is that the oil pump is working. So I took off the gear. We're just going to spin this thing right here and look for oil to pour out. So I should start pouring out of this one right here. Or that one actually. <laughs> See it pouring out? If you go the other way, it should be a. Let me go the other way. Oh, yep. See it shooting out of there? So that's working. All right, we got the whole clutch back together. Clutch lever does work. Just double check that before moving on to the next step. We have to get the base gasket on here, so let's do that next. All right, you guys know I like to use a little bit of the gasket maker on the surface. So I prepped the surface with a razor blade, getting off all the old gasket and then brake cleaner to get off all the oil so that our gasket maker can stick to it. Just a very thin amount on here. You don't have to do this step, I like to do it. 
prevents any leaking. And that gives you peace of mind. <laughs> All right, we've got the uh, cylinder oiled up here. Just gonna quick hone it so that we can measure the ring gap after with the new rings. Just lightly hone this out. Doesn't isn't gonna take much. That's all it's going to take. Yeah, that looks good. You can see just roughed up the surface. So that's good. Alright, here are the new piston rings. Just uh, the standard set from 99 to 08. See what these look like. Look pretty good. Let's measure the ring gap. See what they're at. Alright, we'll start with the first ring right here. Ooh, that's gonna be good. I can already tell. is right there. There's the gap. All right, so it's 14 thousandths. First ring, so that's great. Yep, 18. So that one's 18 thousandths. That's the gap. And the second ring, it's a little bigger than the first, but that's okay. Better a little bit too big than too small. All right, so we got the rings on the piston. A couple things to note. One ring gap needs to be right here. And then the other ring gap needs to be staggered over to here, about 180 degrees away from the other ring gap. And then the ring gaps on the rings down here need to be staggered, so one right here, and then one right here. So they're far away from each other. You don't want any of them lined up with each other, otherwise oil can seep through. So this is all lubed up with oil. You can see it's all lubed up. The rings are all lubed up. This thing is ready to install. The IN in on the piston goes towards the intake side of the quad here. So. All right, cylinder's going on next. Let's see if we can get this to go on here. So cam chain coming through. All right, torque spec on the cylinder bolts, 33 foot-pounds. Get those torqued down. All right, let's start working on the head here. Get the valves, let's open these up. You can see 
Kibble White. That's the brand. They always get these valves, they work really well. See how nice those are. Beautiful. Oh yeah, brand new. Those should work pretty well. So we're gonna lap these in. And then uh, we'll come back once they're lapped in. You guys have seen me lap stuff like a million times, so maybe I'll show you one more time. <laughs> we'll see. Right, we're gonna start with this valve right here. One of the exhaust valves. Valve grinding compound. Put a little on there. Shove that down there, and what we're gonna do is take this tool, suction cup it to it, and then twist it. Let's see. All right, that one's lapped in. Three more to go. All right, valves are all lapped in. Time to get the valve seals off, the old ones. And get the new ones on. These don't feel that bad. Right here are the old ones. New ones going on. Next, just gonna put a little bit of oil on them as we press them on. Valve seals installed, let's install the valves. All right, new valves are all in and installed, looking pretty good. New valve seals are in, everything's good to go. We've got the decompression mechanism in there, so let's install this next. All right, the head nuts right here, torqued to 33 foot pounds, that's done. I set this thing to top dead center. You can see the T mark in there. There you go. Here's the T. Set that to top dead center. We got the cam in. So the lobes right here are pointing down. And then you come over here, and you can see the line right there. One right there, and one right there. So these two are parallel with the surface of the head, and the top one is pointing vertical up and down. So that's how you know this thing is timed. So this thing's all good to go. We have to get the dull pins in, and then we can get the cam cover on. All right, I went ahead and put the valve cover on. The valves for the intake are set at 0 .004 inches, and the exhaust is 0 .005. Those are all within spec and perfect. I went ahead and quick cleaned out the carburetor. It was already pretty good. So I just blew it out with compressed air and then a little bit of uh, carb cleaner. 
uh, was not bad at all. No surprises in there. And then uh, I think that's pretty much it. We got the pipe on right here. So now let's get the oil in it. This thing takes 1.9 quarts of oil. So we'll pour the rest in, and then we'll attempt to start it for the first time. <laughs> Should be good. All right, here we go. We got fresh gas. I dumped out all the old gas, just in case uh, there was water in it, and there wasn't a hose on the gas cap. So I figured there might be water in it, but let's turn it on. Let's see if she cranks over. Hopefully it doesn't smoke. Hopefully it runs, and uh, hopefully this Sounds good. Let's see. Cam chain needs to be a little bit tighter. All right, we're gonna have to play with the cam chain a little bit because I've got that manual tensioner on there. So as soon as the ticking goes away, that means we're on the money. Start it up. Sounding pretty good. There's an exhaust leak. Um, one of the bolts needs to be tightened up, but uh, tightening the cam chain doesn't seem to get rid of the tick, so maybe it's a valve. So we're going to double check the valves, make sure they're in spec. Um, maybe something just rattled loose or something. Alright, so somehow the valves became super loose, so I readjusted those. Let's see if it still has that rattle. That sounds pretty good. That's a lot better. Sounds really good. No smoke. Cool. All right, the exhaust gaskets were pretty much toast. Look how thin those are. Those weren't doing much. Let's get some new ones in there. All right, looks like the exhaust leak's gone. So that's good. Pretty quiet machine for a 400 EX. No ticking whatsoever. Listen to that engine. Sounds really good. All right, we can put the whole machine back together. This thing's pretty much done. Then we gotta work on the brakes. All right, so none of the brakes work. I found a cap to use in my parts uh, bin with their correct screw, so that was awesome. Um, that one we might have to tap into. It's cut off, that bolt right down in there, so that's stripped out. Um, maybe I'll tap into it and try to extract that, but um, oh, that's loose too. We're going to try to bleed these brakes next and try to get the front ones to work at least. It might have a different lever too. All right, look what I found. The correct lever for it, where it doesn't go back like that. So it needs to have that little tab on the end. All right, front brakes are bled. Check this out. Well, 
Those are working great. On to the back brakes. All right, check this out. I took the caliper off the back, and uh, this is what it looked like. No brake pads. The piston's like all the way out. This is the piston right here. And uh, yeah, zero brake pads in there. So I don't know where they went, but uh, it was just basically the piston rubbing on the uh, the rotor. You can see where it's been grinding for a long time. So we're just gonna take the piston out, and uh, I think these guys are gonna have to get a new caliper or a rebuild kit or something, because this is pretty bad. So let's see if we can dig that piston out and uh, at least prevent it from grinding. All right, about two hours later, I ended up trying to get this thing to work. So I had pads laying around for it. So I put the new pads in. Uh, it would not pump. So I took apart the whole master cylinder right here and the piston was stuck up to about here. So there's a little circlip in there you had to take out and then I just pound it up with a screwdriver until that sprung back. And now check this out. It's all bled and it's working. Let's test her out. Oh yeah. So back and front brake now work. That took forever to do, but uh, I think it was worth it. Because you had to take this thing off, and the pin to get in there was hard to get off. And then you had to take this thing off, and then the little circlip was like really hard to get off. <laughs> but uh, we finally got it, and we've got both brakes working. So this thing is ready for a test drive. All right, a couple days later, it rained all of yesterday, so didn't have a chance to uh, take this thing out for a ride, but now we finally do. So first test drive on this thing since the rebuild. Let's see how she does. We'll get her unloaded. And uh, we'll have to kind of do a braking process here as well. So I already did the warming up, letting it cool down, warming up, letting it cool down. So that's all done. So we can take it for an easy ride, let it cool down, medium ride, let it cool down, then hard ride, let it cool down. But yeah, we'll see if everything works, see if the brakes work. And uh, we'll go from there. She runs really good, really smooth, very smooth, very quiet machine here. Let's get the GoPro on and uh, take it for a little test drive. Going easy right now, not going full throttle. All right, easy ride is done. Let this thing cool down for a bit. Here we go. Ooh. I think it 
shut off. It's not good. Maybe we're out of gas here. Keeps on shutting off. All right, so no matter what I do to this thing, I rejetted it. I've taken off the airbox lid. Um, I've taken off the gas cap. I've checked gas flow. It always cuts out in fifth gear pinned. It'll eventually just cut out and stop like it's electrical. Um, so I'm thinking either a fault spark plug or like a coil issue. All right, so I think I found the issue. Um, I took off the spark plug boot and look how corroded that is in there. All right, so the coil finally came for this thing. I, I replaced the coil up there, and we're getting good spark, and everything's working. I took it for another test drive, and it still does the same thing. So I came back, and uh, I was thinking maybe the battery isn't getting charged properly, and it's losing spark at high RPMs. And sure enough, the battery was not charging. So here's the old stator, and here's the new one. I had to order one up, and now it's like probably like a month later. So we've got this thing getting installed. We've got the new gasket on there. So let's see if the new stator works. All right, we installed the new stator and it's still not charging. So it's gotta be the rectifier right here. So let's look at that next. All right, back out here for like the 80th time. And uh, we had the stator replaced, the pickup coil replaced, and now the rectifier replaced. And then I replaced the battery as well. And we're still getting the same problem, cutting off at high RPMs. Um, only in like fourth gear, fourth and fifth gear. And when you're like pinned, it, it just cuts out. So I'm not really sure what it would be. The, the only thing I didn't replace was the CDI. So maybe it's the CDI. CDI is up here. But I'm not sure. It's very weird. It runs perfect otherwise. And I even tried with the choke on a little bit. Still is the same thing, so I know it's getting enough fuel. It's jetted for a little bit bigger too, so. I don't know. Very, very odd. And it has a new spark plug in it. So I'm very, very stumped right now. And all the grounds look good. I checked all the grounds. I don't know, very weird. And the neutral wire's on there good. So I don't know, very odd. Very, very odd. But I think I'm stumped on this one. So if anyone has any suggestions on how to fix it, let me know. Because uh, I looked up online and everyone said replace the stator and replace the rectifier. And uh, that didn't fix the problem. So, I don't know. I'm stumped. Leave a comment down below. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Hopefully we can get this thing going properly. But uh, right now, I'm stumped.